Hey, it's Buddy, it's Potato McWhiskey here, and today we're going to be playing a little bit of Civilization VI Gathering Storm, but we're going to be doing it in a more chill and relaxed fashion. I think we've been doing an awful lot of those sort of over, overly enthusiastic videos, which are a very good time, don't get me wrong, but I think it's about time that we maybe sat back and relaxed with a nice chill video. I'll take a moment here to talk about the mods that I'm using. I'm going to be using the colorized historic moments, the enhanced mod map, manager and the SuperTax simple UI adjustments. These are three non gameplay affecting mods that are purely UI slash prettyifying the game. And uh, if I remember, there will be a link to those mods in the description of this video. If I don't remember, make sure you yell at me until I actually do put those links there. Play a little bit of single player today. Let's go ahead and create a game. I'm not really sure what save I want to play. I definitely want to play on DD like usual. And uh, you know what? I think I'm going to go ahead and do a standard size map. And I'm kind of feeling like either a domination or a culture game. And I feel like the best Civ for both of those things together would maybe be Persia. I haven't played Persia in quite a while. And I think they have quite a bit of stuff going for them with regards to a domination slash culture game. So we might go ahead and give that a go. We've also been doing an awful lot of Pangea games. Now Pangea is kind of the best one in my opinion, but I think we might go ahead and see if we can slap something else in. I'm not a huge fan of something like Inland Sea, but maybe we'll do something like Fractal and see if we get a good and interesting map. I'm actually going to do something a little bit unorthodox here and I'm actually going to go for an old world age map so that there's less hills and less mountains which I think will make things a little bit more interesting and I'm also going to make it so that it's an arid map so there's less forests on the world and I think this will probably imbalance the game a little bit but I think it'll make the map look a little bit more interesting we won't quite be able to take advantage of hills or uh, forests and stuff like that quite as much in terms of chopping and building mines but I think it might uh, sort of push us in the direction of maybe uh, playing slightly differently anyway that's all the settings set up I don't think I'm going to change anything else I might just go up to disaster level four as well just to keep things interesting let's go ahead and get started Let's take a moment here to appreciate this starting location. It looks fairly okay, actually. I'm seeing a couple of wheat tiles on planes, which means we get a good amount of food and production to start off with. We have quite a good amount of forests and marsh around here as well. I'm curious if I want to settle in place or if I want to move. I'm not seeing any massive reasons to move away from this position, so I think I'm going to go ahead and just settle in place and then see what the game throws at me. Now, I could have made a canal city by settling on this deer tile, but, you know, then I wouldn't have been able to work the deer tile and get that nice two food, two production out of it. Let's open up with a scout rather than use the production exploit. I'll probably make use of the production exploit a couple of times throughout this game, but probably not build the entire game around it, more just use it as a tool that has uh, some value in certain scenarios. I'm also going to go ahead and get to work on animal husbandry so that we can unlock the potential to maybe go horses and uh, if not we'll maybe head towards bronze working nice we found a tribal village next to a floodable river it looks like this river is right on the coastline i'm curious to see uh, what secrets this uh, tribal village holds for us looks like we ran into zanzibar as well and we were the first to meet them so that's a nice cool plus four gold per turn in the capital which is going to be pretty nice because it means we can maybe buy an extra tile or two in the early game oh and we got a free builder now that is quite interesting i could for example throw down farms on both of these wheat tiles which i think is not an entirely terrible idea I'm not really sure what else I'll use this builder for in the long term. And I may as well get the boost for irrigation, as well as just generally have slightly better tiles. Um, the unfortunate thing is my capital city doesn't have access to fresh water. So that maybe was an argument that I should have moved. But uh, we are going to be putting an aqueduct on this tile later on. So I'm not too worried about it. Looks like a little barbarian scout has found my village. I'm not too worried about that right now. I'm going to keep exploring to the north just a little bit more. And then I'll probably bring this guy down to hunt down that barb camp. Go ahead and get you moving. Hey, we also bumped into Antananarivo, which is pretty nice. Looks like they're going to be giving us plus two culture per turn. I'm pretty happy about that. Meeting two city-states first in a game is about as good as you can hope for. Uh, three would be incredible. Meeting one is often usually all that I really hope for, but meeting two is, is, is quite a good scenario here. Now, in this case, uh, this city is one turn from growing. So what I am going to do is I will do the production saving exploit just to save one turn of production to put towards a settler. 
And then of course we'll get to work on that settler taking about 12 turns based on the current productivity. Now, do I want to work those turtles or do I want to grow harder? If I work the turtles, I get extra science and gold, which is pretty nice. So I think I am going to prioritize working the turtles and that might even make me want to pick up sailing earlier in the game. If I was able to redo the very first turn in the game, I might have actually settled on the deer. Now that I see all what's going on down here and the fact that this was actually freshwater and not coast. Nice, we got animal husbandry, which unlocks the pasture, camp, horses, and the ability to harvest all of those things. Did we actually run into a source of horses? I'm not seeing one around here, so it's unlikely that we'll be able to do any sort of horse-based timing push. And it looks like we've also ran into Alexander, which is a bit of a problem. I'm gonna have to go ahead and send him a delegation to try and keep him a little bit happier or else he's gonna wanna go to war with me. He's already got three cities, cause of course we're playing on Didi. Uh, this means that this settler is really risky and means we essentially have to follow this up with a slinger or a warrior. I'm not sure which we'll do yet, but one of the two, will be essentially necessary in order to keep our civilization alive. And uh, yeah, I think it's a hard toss up here between going for archery. I think I'm going to put some turns into archery so that I can get an archer out if I need to, but I won't quite finish it so that I can still build slingers and maybe fish for the Eureka. All right, Code of Laws is finished. Let's go ahead and park some stuff in. I'm going to park in Discipline and Urban Planning to get that little bit of production and stuff. I'm kind of tempted to put in God King to get a Pantheon this game. I don't think I'm going to go for a religion. You know, I could plug in Urban Planning and that would get me 25 production. But if I plug in God King, 25 turns from now, I could get a free Settler, which seems like a pretty good deal for plugging in God King. This is the uh, rarely utilized builder scouting. Now, typically you only want to scout one tile at a time per turn. However, I am defended by these guys, so I'm being a little bit more aggressive in how uh, much I'm exploring because I want to look for uh, where this city is going to be dropped. I think one city is definitely going to go somewhere on this river, and then I think another city is definitely going to go on this hill right here. So uh, here is my current thinking. If I settle here... I'll be able to place an aqueduct right here. I'll also be able to place a canal right here. And finally, I should be able to slap down a dam at some point as well. And if I do all three of those, I should be able to put down a industrial zone in the middle of those and get a plus six industrial zone, but also it'll actually be a plus seven because it has more districts adjacent to it. And then I can put a harbor right here and in fact get a plus eight industrial zone which will eventually become a plus 16 industrial zone so i think that's pretty worth it overall to do something like this we can use this as a center of production although the land over here is pretty flat so getting that kind of a production going is going to be a bit of a struggle but i think it's something to aim for in the long term all right we've got a little bit of a barbarian warrior problem so i'm going to look for see this tile right here it is a plains hill uh, tile whereas this tile only has a defense modifier of three this tile has a defense modifier of six so i'm going to see if i can park my unit on this tile to bait these guys into attacking me on the more defensive tile <laughs> looks like alexander is getting hit by some tornadoes that's entirely his own fault i have nothing to do with that although can it really be your fault if you're getting hit by like an act of nature i guess purely for the purpose of getting a boost for craftsmanship here i'm gonna go ahead and purchase this cattle tile and uh, then i'll go ahead and improve it found ourselves another tribal village let's go ahead and pick up what's in there and that was the boost for archery that was really not what i wanted if i'm being 100 percent above board there's also a new barbarian encampment appearing over here, which is a bit of a problem for us. But our scout is now in the area to do a bit of information gathering. I'm worried about Macedonia now, now that he's cleared out this barb camp here, sending his troops up towards me. So I'm going to want to build up my army. We'll also complete craftsmanship this turn by building this pasture, which will allow us to plug in uh, Agage, which will potentially allow us to build our troops faster. I think um, I think I am going to plug that in because I do plan to build a couple of things. I'll keep God King in for now because I do plan on trying to get a Pantheon. But we also get the boost for horseback riding, which is nice. Although we still don't have an access to a horse resource. Which kind of sucks because maybe going horses early would have been pretty good. But I'm going to start maybe making my way towards bronze working. Uh, I'm not so sure. 
about what else I'll do, but maybe we can use our Immortals against Alexander if we hit Iron. Right now I'm thinking taking ownership of this gigantic lake is a pretty important thing because this could potentially be the site of building a Huey Toa Kelly, which would give us a lot of production, food and stuff like that if we could also get a harbour in this lake. I think it's a highly valuable thing to maybe consider and I think that's what we're going to go ahead and do. The question is though, where exactly do I settle? The problem I have is if I settle right here, for example, I could place an aqueduct here and then get a really good industrial zone in between those two aqueducts. Whereas if I settle on the T, I will get access to the T and get a much bigger bonus in the short term. I think I'm gonna go ahead and opt to settle on the T, even if it does make me a little bit vulnerable. I'm also gonna go ahead and pick up a warrior and then maybe an archer, we'll see about how we go about about that. All right, time to settle on the T. This will also push back Alexander's loyalty pressure a little bit for us and uh, sort of block him from settling too aggressively towards us. It won't exactly cut this off, but it'll at least open up the potential for us to move our, another city along this direction and sort of block off and claim this land for ourselves. The very first thing I'm going to work on in Tarsus is an archer potentially to defend itself. It'll take a little bit of a while to get that, but I'm not too worried about how long it's going to take. I'm more worried about not having that archer with an extremely aggressive neighbor. I don't think I can really delay bronze working anymore because if I'm going to have a timing attack on Alexander while he's vulnerable, I'm going to need to have access to iron. If I don't have access to iron, this is going to be flipping into a purely defensive game. Um, whether or not I hit iron really dictates if I can go to war early or potentially at all in this game. Just grabbed ourselves a second warrior. Let's go ahead and pick up another settler here. This is a bit of a hopeful settler. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to finish this one, um, but I really do hope I can get it before Alexander declares war on me. Again, because I'm really hoping to get it down here in this sort of a direction and maybe close off this whole continent area for myself because I'm not seeing any sort of like loyalty pressure off in this direction and oh, there's foreign trade we got the boost for that yeah there might be a city over here looks like a city state but if i can block this off then i've got myself quite a good bit of land to exploit and take advantage of over the course of the game all right here it is this is what i was expecting alexander is getting ready to go to war with me he just moved all of his warriors in to uh, collapse in on this city i was hoping i would be able to delay that i'm gonna go ahead and give him tea as a gift and then I'll give him an additional 50 gold. And hopefully this will improve his relation with me to the point where he needs a little bit more gold. Hopefully this will improve relations with him to the point where he will uh, want to be friends with me. The only other thing I could do to improve his relations is maybe declare war on something. But I don't know if that's really going to matter. So here's my worry. The second that this unit gets to full health, he's going to declare war on me. I gave him a favorable trade deal. Um, but it doesn't seem to be enough to really bring him up to be friends with me or at least go above neutral. I even declared war on Mohenjo Daro just to check if that would improve our relations with him. But um, yeah, it looks like he's all set on going to war with me and I don't really know if I can defend this city. I'm trying to think what my best move with this warrior is. He can take one more hit. I think if I go to this hill, maybe I can bait him to chase me a bit. Okay, he is chasing me a bit, which is what we want. And ideally, I want him to kind of chase me deeper into the jungle. So I'm going to move to here. We've got to try and keep this city alive for as long as possible. Right now, it's only being hit by two units, and it's got 20 combat strength because I've got a warrior garrison in it. Now, you might think it would be a good idea to hit units outside of the city, but uh, if this unit takes a negative to its health penalty, it will actually lower the combat strength of the city, so it's pretty important to keep this city at a reasonably high health. It probably will fall, and then we'll want to retreat the warrior out as soon as we can. There's the Netherlands, at least. I don't know how much I can do with that kind of a relationship, but let's have a look. All right, so Alexander is chasing me down, and now this city is forfeit. It's going to fall this turn no matter what I do, so my best thing to do is to try and get this warrior out of there and get him to survive. Still being chased by this warrior, let's go ahead and retreat. Let's get you backed up into a nice defensive tile and see if you can start making your way home. First archer is out. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to go for more archers. I can't go for settlers right now, which is really what I do want to be building. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and move into this tile to try and bait these guys to chase this warrior, maybe towards Antananarivo. And if I go here, there's a small chance that this guy attacks me and kills himself on me, which is kind of what I want him to do. 
The problem is I declared Warren Mohenjo Dar- Daro, not Anton and Arrivo. I got those mixed up. I declared Warren and uh, Mohenjo Daro, which is going to be a bit of a problem for me now because I can't explore this direction without getting murderized by these units. Well, we've killed our very first warrior here with this archer, but we're going to have to uh, keep playing it safe. Yeah, let's go ahead and keep running away. We'll we'll recover this city. Don't you worry about that. Another barb camp appeared over here. Just tons of barb camps appearing in this game. My objective here is to try and bait these guys into chasing this warrior while this archer takes shots from the forest. There's a pantheon. Uh, ideally, <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and pick up religious settlements to get the free settler. Maybe we can get a settler up into a position without it getting captured. Um, that would be ideal. I'm going to send it up leftwise. I'm going to have this guy fortify here on this tile. And we're going to keep shooting these warriors until we can get them killed. We also have a promotion available. Let's take the volley promotion so that you do more damage. And then let's have you run northwest with this settler just to keep him nice and safe. Second archer is online, which is going to allow us to start pushing this guy back. He does have a fairly large army in comparison to ours. It's almost twice our size. But we do have really, really powerful ranged units. And this warrior is now fully healed so we can start pushing him towards our enemies. Again, as much as I'd love to build a settler, it's time to get more archers. Let's focus our fire onto one of these warriors. They are pretty damn tough, but I can maybe get a kill here. I'm worried about uh, retaliation, but that's one warrior down. So I think we've taken out two of his warriors, which is eaten into his military strength. We might be able to actually conquer Alexander here with a very early army. This war might actually work out in our favor. Let's go ahead and get our settler up in this direction. And we actually ran into Antioch and we were the first to meet them as well. We've got a ton of gold on our uh, hands right now. I might be able to purchase an archer next turn, which is going to be a big deal because then we're up to four, uh, four archers once this one completes. And four archers is a very formidable force in the early game. The only downside is we just picked up bronze working and we didn't find a single instance of iron. I even did a map search and there is absolutely no iron anywhere to be found. So we're not going to be able to go immortals this game, which really sucks because they do in fact cost iron, which means we're going to have to be relying on stuff like uh, crossbowmen and pikemen. Uh, which is not ideal. It's not the end of the world, but it's definitely not ideal. So let's go ahead and get to work on pottery. Another tribal village and we picked up state workforce. That's a nice little boost actually because I wouldn't have got that otherwise because I don't plan on building any districts early. And with that boost we can get rid of God King and maybe plug in something a little bit more useful like urban planning so we can build units just that little bit faster. Looks like Macedon is retreating. Let's go ahead and chase him down with our archers. We settled this nice city up here. It's not an ideal city. Oh, and this is the Colorized Historic Era mods or whatever it's called. It's a Colorized Historic Moments. That's the mod. You can find it on the Steam Workshop. But we've settled down Susa and Susa is going to get to work on certain things. One of those things being a builder so that it can start to improve its own territory. And in fact, after pottery, we are going to pick up irrigation because there's a couple of sugar tiles that we can improve here. We're also going to go ahead and talk to the Netherlands because we do have a copy of tea. Oh, for some reason, we gave that copy of tea. Oh, right. That was on Tarsus. Never mind. <laughs> that was me just being an idiot. Never mind. All right. So I'm pretty sure this spearman appeared uh, this turn, which is a bit of a problem. What we're going to do is we're going to step you this way to the left. Take a shot at the spearman. Good God. How are these guys so tough? We're going to take two shots at the spearman and then use the warrior to block. And then this warrior is healing up and will follow up. I'm actually, you know what? I don't think I need more. Um, I don't think I need more archers. I'm going to go ahead and grab myself a spearman to help fight the good fight. This guy's really close to a promotion. So I'm going to move him up to shoot that. And then I'm going to kill this with my warrior. That'll get me close to a couple of promotions. And we'll move this guy forward as well. It looks like he's placed down a commercial hub. I don't want to let him finish that because I don't want a commercial hub in this city. Um, kind of making executive decisions with my goddamn city that I didn't want. I'm going to be using this scout to try and hunt down any uh, units and positions and stuff like that that might be of concern to me. I thought Clay must feel happy in the good pottery. Right, hand. there is pottery. And I think, unfortunately, I basically have to commit to this war uh, as a sort of do or die war. Um, that's going to require me to get more spearmen and more archers basically until I murder the enemy or get murdered. Uh, which is really unfortunate because I, I really don't want to get caught in this kind of a war. So I'm probably going to get another um, 
spearman here. Probably going to get another archer and then a spearman. In any case, it's time to uh, start getting into position uh, attacking Tarsus. We'll start using our archers to peck away at the city. We'll take a promotion on this guy and then we'll move this spearman over. This archer will get moving as well. This is not ideal. We've got a chariot coming in to reinforce this city. So what we need to do is to start positioning units in a particular way um, that can help deal with this. In order to prevent this chariot from getting into the city, I'm going to go ahead and put my scout here to block. Now that the blocking is completed, I'm going to swap the warrior and the scout and we'll start hammering Tarsus with our units. I'll just pick up free inquiry here. It's pretty easy to get Eurekas to give you boosts, so I think it's a pretty reasonable pathway to take. I'm trying to survive here for one more turn until I can actually take over Tarsus. Probably one or two of these units will die, but that's okay because I'm planning for that death. Go ahead and shoot the city a couple more times and then finish it off with this Spearman. And then bring this warrior up for reinforcements. We recaptured Tarsus, which gives us access to that thing, the um, T resource, which we can now sell to Wilhelmina for gold. It should give me about 3 gold and 15 gold. That probably measures up to about 80-ish gold. Yeah. Looks like the total amount of gold she'll give me is 83, so I'll take that. That seems like a pretty okay deal right now, considering I don't know if I'm going to be able to keep that tea. And more importantly, I just like need to have a little bit of extra gold in case I want to buy an extra unit, because an extra unit could be the thing that sort of flips the balance of power. Um, I would love to work an in infrastructure in here, but I'm just going to see if I can spam out a warrior at some point to really help this city. I really don't know why this city is growing so slowly. I think it's maybe disloyalty. Which is a little bit dumb because this is my city, it belongs to me. <laughs> Let's go ahead and grab ourselves a victor and park him in Tarsus for loyalty. That'll help this city grow and produce. So actually, amazingly, my scout survived. So I'm going to go ahead and move this archer to here. I'm going to move the scout to here. Oh, that is really unfortunate positioning on the uh, behalf of my units. I'm going to go ahead and move the Spearman to here. Even if it's dangerous, he'll get hit, but then he'll have a promotion. So I think that'll work out just fine. We'll bring this archer to the city. So thankfully he didn't actually attack my scout, so I should be able to get my scout out of there. I've got another archer popping off here who I'm going to start approaching down towards Dion. I've got quite a bit of stuff that I need to take care of, but thankfully this archer can now shoot out of the city. And we're going to go ahead and start laying on a bit of damage onto that uh, chariot. I'm going to even approach with this archer with the explicit uh, purpose of kind of just putting pressure on these guys. Let's go ahead and fortify these guys in position. Hopefully start pushing these back. Once we get into open, more open terrain, this shouldn't be too bad. But uh, we've re retaken Tarsus and we're holding the line. The big worry for me is if he can get suzerainty of Zanzibar. Uh, then I'm in really bad trouble. So it might be worth my while to pick up an envoy from mysticism just to be able to have that suzerainty myself, which will also give me access to a couple of luxuries. Anyway, let's go ahead and pick up riding because that's on the pathway to getting military tactics, which is a pretty important upgrade. So is uh, machinery. This rough terrain is making my life a nightmare. I can't take advantage of my ranged units, so I'm going to have to start retreating and seeing what I can do. It might be worth it to buy a builder and just chop out these rainforests so I can start shooting over these stuff. I'm going to need a significant amount more gold, though, if I'm ever going to pull that off. I'm going to go ahead and plug in Garrison Commander into Victor. Right now, I'm just really struggling to hold and keep alive. So I think this is probably the best move. This will keep my units who live in and around the um, Tarsus city uh, to be stronger. If I go in here, I can kind of read it off to you. Units defending within the city's territory gain plus five combat strength and your other cities have extra loyalty. So that's one that I kind of want anyway. You can see here if I show you. Now, if he attacks me inside this territory, I think I will have higher defensive power. Anyway, we are getting some shots in. I think I'm going to push this Spearman to the right. 
which will allow me to start pushing this archer forward. And I'm also getting a shot in on this guy. This guy's gonna take a shot on this warrior. And that'll also get him a promotion. This spearman is really close to a promotion as well. I'm not too far off the purchase price of a builder, so I should be able to clear out these jungles, open up the terrain and make it easier to push against uh, Macedon here. I am a little bit worried that his military strength is still climbing. I wasn't quite expecting this guy to be able to move and attack into a hill, but he does have two promotions, which means he has that plus uh, movement speed. I'm gonna go, to, go ahead and take Thrust here. Thrust is a pretty nice promotion for Spearman when you're fighting any sort of melee units. I'm also worried about this, uh, <laughs> this archer right here. He's going to start doing some damage to me, um, which is a bit of a problem. I'm going to go ahead and take the garrison promotion on this guy because he is inside a city. Whereas this guy out here, I'm going to go ahead and take Arrow Storm, which will give him much more power in a general sense. Let's go ahead and take a shot at this guy. I could clean him up, but I would be worried about the counter attack from this guy. I'm also a little bit worried about this archer now hitting this warrior. So I'm going to start focus firing on this chariot, I think. Although I can kill this warrior this turn and cutting down his army is the right move, I feel. If you've got some like barbarian archers and warriors hanging out over here, I'm just going to go ahead and back up and let them kind of wreak havoc while I approach from the east. My warrior almost died, unfortunately. Um, or, or not unfortunately, but rather fortunately, he is still alive. <laughs> it's not unfortunate that my warrior didn't die. Um, so we'll get to keep him and let him live to fight another day. And I think it would be a good idea to get rid of this guy. So that's exactly what we're going to do. And then it would be a good idea to get rid of this guy as well and start pushing these guys forward. Now that we have an army, it would be really nice to build up a district of some kind. Um, but I'm worried that if I stop here, um, I'm not going to be able to have the kind of momentum I need. The thing is, I need both a campus and an encampment and a government plaza just anywhere inside my empire. I think I'm going to go ahead and get to work on an encampment right now. Or rather, I'll at least place it. Yeah, I think at least placing it is just fine. And then I'd really like to get a campus, but I don't really have anything. I would have to build the actual library in there to get any value out of it. So that makes getting the encampment a bit better of a proposition. But the problem is I need a lot of science to be able to get to these things, which could also be done through getting a settler. In any case, I should work, make my way towards mysticism and then political philosophy. And I should maybe consider plugging in the 50% production towards settler card. I think I have the army to challenge this guy right now, but it might be worth my while to just keep powering through and building army, which I think is what we're going to do. We're just going to try to power through and muscle through whatever it is he throws at me by just continuously building an army. It's a huge commitment and it's going to put us very far behind, but I think it's basically the only chance I have to come out of this war on top. The only exception will be up here in Susa where I try to actually build up a bit of infrastructure in the form of like builders and granaries and all that sort of stuff. I don't know if a... I don't know if a campus makes sense right now, but um, definitely I think I'll go ahead and grab myself a monument. Thankfully, this archer came forward. Very silly move of him because I put him right into the firing line. And that's going to go ahead and result in his death and make it much easier to push on a guy. All right, this warrior is under threat, so I'm going to go ahead and run him away. I'm also going to start running these units uh, more more aggressively as well i could start placing pyrodesas but i don't know if i want to commit to placing them just yet they do get special adjacency um from theater squares holy sites commercial hubs and city centers those aren't bad moves but i think uh, right now i'm holding off i might build holy sites later on in the game um purely just for the faith income if we do pivot to some sort of tourist game right now i'm just purely focused on this war i don't know if you just saw that there actually um, one of Alexander's cities was taken out by barbarians, which is actually really, really great because it makes my life a little bit easier. It means I'm going to have an easier time pushing into him. So let's go ahead and get these archers and the spearmen moving. Looks like he's building a government plaza. I'm curious to see if I get to keep that if I don't already have one, um, because that would actually be pretty handy to be able to get one for free, essentially. I'm going to go ahead and plug this envoy into Zanzibar purely because I'm just scared of Zanzibar doing bad stuff to me from the behind, um, which is, you know, a pretty normal fear. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Um, okay, uh, we've got a couple of... We've actually got some really nice land over here. So definitely, definitely we'll be doing more settling later on in the game. But for now... For now, we're just trying to stay alive. I could start hitting this city. I want to wait until my archers are in range. I think it's a little bit premature to do that. And uh, I really want to get this sugar online as well. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I've sold this sugar to you for that little bit of gold. I have 240 gold in the bank, and I'm kind of tempted to purchase a builder in my capital. I could double chop this deer tile and finish this uh, encampment fairly quick which would maybe result in some good outcomes. Potentially, I could also, kind of like long-term planning here, I could put some industrial zones down, some theater squares, all that sort of stuff. I'm just not sure what I want to do. I think, yeah, I think I am going to purchase that builder and uh, see if we can't finish that encampment by chopping out the deer. It would kind of work better if I had a Magnus uh, in place. Unfortunately, I put both of my points into Victor, which, you know, it was a necessary move, and I think it was the right move because it ended up saving units and keeping me alive a little bit better. I'd really love it if you would just move, please. Just just get out of the way, please and thank you. Ah, oh, you f for the love of God, get out of the way! Oh, the poor little spearman took a hit from the uh, from the warrior over there. Well, let's um, let's see if we can't keep him alive. This archer is running for his life. Which is exactly what we wanted to do. We're going to start hitting a guy now. Let's also uh, pull back the spearman. To get him healed up. And we'll start moving an archer this way as well. Finally, I'll be able to improve this. But I know I don't have the cash to actually buy it. So I'll have to wait a couple of turns. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Let's go ahead and get to work on this encampment. And the reason I want the encampment is because I think this is... Very clearly some sort of domination game. And I think uh, over the course of both of these turns, harvesting the deer and chopping the woods will both sort of result in a nice big boost to this encampment production. It will kind of leave me without a good tile to work, but I can always, uh, you know, find more later. Don't worry about that. This city just finished a warrior and really I need to start getting some kind of infrastructure. Now what I was hoping to do... And the unfortunate thing is that this encampment actually kind of screws me because I could have put a nice... I could have put the government plaza here and then had the two um, industrial zone aqueduct combos in a nice little arrangement which would have resulted in a lot of production if I had done something like this. So if I had identified that I could have done this earlier, I wouldn't have actually placed this encampment. I might have just put it somewhere else. But uh, the fact of the matter is, I have placed the encampment, so now I have to live without this government plaza being super optimal. So I think I will just get to start on the government plaza in Tarsus, uh, partially for the loyalty, partially just because I need the, uh, you know, what do you call them, governor uh, thingies? Governor titles? That's the word. <laughs> uh, okay, let's go ahead and do a little bit of scouting down here with our scout. I want to know what's going on with all the barbs that were here killing this city. And I really want to get control of a guy and then push really hard for Pella. So let's see if we can't get this army formed up for that push. All right, time to harvest the deer as well. I spent a little bit of time moving my units around a little bit inefficiently, I'll admit. But we are starting to get us around on a guy and we'll be able to take it down. It looks like there's a whole bunch of barbs down here that totally murdered this city, which I'm pretty happy about because that makes my life a whole lot easier. And uh, it's one less city that I have to conquer. In fact, I'm pretty sure that um, Alexander is down to two cities. No, it looks like he's down to three cities. Uh, Methane, Methane, Pella, and Agai. I'm not sure where the third one is, but we should be able to take out these two, no problem. Don't forget, he declared war on me, so I have a whole bunch of grievances against him, which means holding these cities in terms of loyalty will be much easier than if I had been the aggressor. Looks like he's really trying to have, hit back at me, and she wants to buy my Diplo favor. You know what? Honestly, I'll take any gold I can get at this point in the game. Um, it's pretty nice. Alright, so that barbarian horseman killed himself on me. Let's go ahead and take the ranger promotion and then move this archer up into a sort of speculatively aggressive position. We're going to go ahead and get to work on a second builder. Nah, you know what? We're going to skip that second builder and I think... Yeah, I think I'm going to chop this tile and then place the campus. So 
I'll just do the production saving exploit to save a little bit of production and then get that campus out because I just need both an encampment and a camp campus to uh, start actually getting some infrastructure up because I just I just have no infrastructure in my entire empire. I've basically got a couple of improved tiles and a couple of cities and considering it's turn 59 we're on three cities and we have like spent almost all of our production on an army it's really not looking like a great start in terms of infrastructure we'll be able to take out a guy without too much trouble and uh, in order to follow this up with maybe another aggressive war against for example the netherlands i will start pushing towards the uh, machinery technology all right, so let's shoot a guy a bunch of times, get a bit of experience on these archers, more importantly, do damage to the city without taking damage, and then get it finally cleaned up with these two melee units. There we go. That's a bit of a problem in terms of loyalty, but we just reassigned Victor to that city, and then bada bing, bada boom, it's not so bad. Yeah, I don't really have a second governor title to make that easier, but I guess we're just going to have to try and hold on to it. Yeah, it looks like garrison unit during occupation gives us 10. Governor placed here is 8. I didn't know. Is that a, is that a thing unique to Persia? You know, it probably would have been a good idea if I had been the one who declared the surprise war. Because I would have got that nice movement. But I think it's good here that I'm in the defensive. Because that means I'm allowed to essentially spend my grievances to hold these cities without many loyalty penalties. In fact, this city is totally fine and we can hold this for a very long time. I'm just going to get a guy to work on a monument because I just wanted to slowly build infrastructure as, it, as its loyalty increases. So we've got these two really nice sugar tiles. I'm tempted to put a mine here, but I'm also tempted to put a paradisa on this tile. It is a hill, which means it has a little bit better base production, but the city already has plenty of food and getting extra culture and gold might not be a bad move in, in exchange for what is essentially one production. So we'll kind of see. So nine turns to finish the campus. We just go ahead and chop this tile. Boom. And then we place the campus. It's down to seven turns. That will get us plus one science per turn. We'll also be building the library and then maybe we'll look to refill in with settlers once we have our land secured and Alexander defeated. Continuing to scout down here to keep an eye on what's going on. I feel like uh, we've manipulated this game into a very good position for ourselves. Partially through luck and partially through good gameplay, I would argue. This guy's being very, very aggressive looking to kill this archer. I'm tempted to follow the archer back a tile. Keep it safe. Yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to take the risk that he might kill me with like massive combat boosts. And uh, yeah, it looks like Alexander is having a pretty big problem with the whole barbarian thing. Let's see if we can kill this horseman before it gets a shot off. Yeah, Jesus, he's really having a problem with barbarians. No wonder he lost that city. So if I place a Paradisa down here, I get a plus three gold, plus one culture, which seems pretty reasonable to me uh, compared to placing a mine, right? Because like this gives the city a really strong gold income, which is something that I need. It's already making 7.3 gold per turn on, off of three improved tiles, which I got to say is really damn good. You usually don't start to see like gold incomes approaching 10 until you have a commercial hub with a couple buildings in it. But anyway, that's it from me. I'm going to call this an end to this very first episode. I hope you guys are enjoying this more chill gameplay. I love you all very much, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.